This video is sponsored by NordVPN, the fastest virtual private network you're going to find. NordVPN can significantly boost your online privacy and security. It hides your IP address and also includes advanced anti-malware capabilities. So whether you're enjoying the internet at home or out and about, NordVPN is what you use to make sure your private information stays private. No third parties snooping in on you. And you can use NordVPN on up to six devices on every major platform. Personally, I was blown away by how easy this is. By just one click, I can travel all over the world. And this also unlocks exclusive content on my streaming services not available in America. For example, I can access Star on Disney+, Plus, even though it's not in my country, to enjoy the more mature content. Please use my unique link here and in the description, nordvpn.com monster, to get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus one free month. And it's all risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Playtime! Yay! HG Toys was a company out of Long Beach, New York that offered a variety of products in the late 1970s throughout the 1980s. Stuff like a toy gas pump and a play shave set. Nah, HG actually had a lot of really impressive licenses like He-Man, Voltron, Alien, too many to list here. In their time, they also manufactured a lot of jigsaw puzzles. Love Boat, Fantasy Island, Chips, Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll. And of more interest to this channel's audience, Shogun Warriors, King Kong. And in 1978, they offered four Godzilla puzzles. Three were 150-piece standard puzzles, and one was a 100-piece jumbo puzzle. But MIB, you ask me? Why make a video about puzzles? Because look at this original art, man. I love this art. This is the smaller, more dinosaur-esque version of Godzilla that I just wish there was more of in the world. Maybe it reminds you of the Marvel Godzilla that was out at the same time. It might remind you of the storyboard art for the unmade 1983 Steve Miner movie, Godzilla King of the Monsters in 3D, and William Stout's concept work. It might even remind you of the unused Stan Winston Godzilla design we almost saw hit the big screen in the 1990s. Everything I can find attributes this puzzle art to Earl Norum, who had a long career of these near-photorealistic pictures. He's contributed to Marvel, He-Man, even Dinosaurs Attack! But getting back to our puzzles, the three 150-piece Godzilla puzzles measure 10 by 14 inches, and they each have names. There's Harbor Havoc, Air Attack, and City Rampage. This is funny because in the HG Toys catalog and marketing materials, they make a point that Godzilla is a good guy. He's the good monster. He started as a villain, and now he's today's favorite hero. Is he? Is he, though? It's not my intention to make you sit here and watch me do three jigsaw puzzles, but maybe we'll do just one. <laughs> The nice thing about a finished puzzle is you can enjoy the art without the big title breaking it up like on the box. In fact, this big title on the box kind of made the puzzle a pain in the ass because I had no idea what the middle of the picture was supposed to look like. There was a special promotion in Canada where you could mail away this form and order a box with all three puzzles in it. The box is generic and I've seen it in various colors. I have this blue one. You'll see that each puzzle is in a little bag with a little picture attached to tell you which puzzle it is. But even better, this box came with rolled up mini posters of the puzzle art. No titling, no puzzle breaks, just this beautiful art by itself on a beautiful poster. This makes my heart so happy. So that's the three 150 piece puzzles, but what about the jumbo puzzle? This one seems much rarer and it took me much, much longer to get in my hands. This puzzle is only 100 pieces and finishes at 14 and a half by 36 inches. Unlike the other puzzles, this one doesn't seem to have a cool name. And it's the only one depicting Godzilla fighting something. And you might think I'm gonna make you watch me do this puzzle while playing that fart music again, and you're right. <laughs> They were 
not kidding about jumbo size. This puzzle's taking up the entire table. But man, it is so good to see this art without a giant blue thing in the middle. It's not easy to get a full grasp on what Godzilla is fighting here. There are four long segmented necks that look mechanical with snake-like heads and sort of cat whiskers. The mouths can shoot some type of beam, although the beam doesn't seem to be hurting Godzilla much. The heads seem to be able to burrow in and out of the ground and through walls. We can't get a sense on if all four necks are attached to one body, or if Godzilla is actually fighting a swarm of mecha snakes. The mystery thickens a little bit when you check out the Sphinx blog, where the author covers this puzzle and shares a photo of original sample art, sort of a mock-up of the box before it went to print. The author received this pick from a collector named Greg, and I'll share the link to the blog entry below. And if you go back to this sales sheet, you can see the same mock-up art along with some mock-ups of the other boxes. You'll see that originally, this art was also intended to be sold as a poster you could color in. All of this is very awesome, but unfortunately, it's not shedding much more light on what Godzilla is fighting here. In addition to puzzles, HG Toys made a lot of playsets, and they made a Godzilla playset released in 1979. Godzilla Battles the Tricephalon Monster. And you'll notice on the box art, the jumbo puzzle art is being reused, with one head being purposely cropped out, leaving only three, to imply that the Mecha Snake creature is the Tricephalon Monster. Try three! A head has got to go! Sorry, Murray! In the playset, the Tricephalon toy does indeed have three long segmented necks and some nubs on it, and they connect to this body that to me makes it look sort of like an aquatic creature, what with the giant fin and flipper feet. And it's colored green, so we can't tell if this was meant to be implied as robotic or metallic based on the figure. So I guess, if anything, this monster or monsters was retconned into the Tricephalon monster the following year, even if it didn't start that way. That was quite a wild tangent from the puzzles, but these things are the things that keep me up at night. But anyway, please join me in the next playtime, where we will indeed take a nice close look at the HG Toys Godzilla Battles the Tricephalon Monster playset. I can't wait to show you. In the meantime, let me know what you think of these puzzles, the art, or this monster or monsters Godzilla is fighting, and we'll keep the conversation going in the comments. Later.